If you're not careful and dropped out of reality in the wrong areas, you'll end up in the back rooms, where it's nothing but the stink of old moist carpet, the madness of mono yellow, the endless background noise of fluorescent lights at maximum hum buzz, and approximately 600 million square miles of randomly segmented empty rooms to be trapped in. God save you if you hear something wandering around nearby, because it sure as hell heard you. Hello everybody, I'm Stretch. Today, we'll be talking about the back rooms. The back rooms refer to an alternate dimension beyond the boundaries of baseline reality, where people may accidentally find themselves in by no clipping out of reality. No clipping, which is normally a speedrunning technique that allows players to pass through solid objects in video games, is a means of getting from place to place within the back rooms. This usually occurs via tripping or accidental collisions. Humans who have entered the back rooms are referred to as wanderers. Wanderers of the back rooms can also utilize no clipping to travel between levels. So, what are levels? Levels are the building blocks of the back rooms. Think of them as different locations in a big country. Levels can be many things buildings, fields, natural structures, abstract landscapes, etc. Currently, only nine distinct levels are confirmed collectively known as the main nine, from level zero to level eight, each with their own unique traits and characteristics. Take level zero, for example. You've probably already seen this everywhere on the internet, but level zero, also known as the lobby or tutorial level, is the first level of the back rooms. It is a seemingly infinite, non-linear space that resembles the back rooms of a retail outlet. All rooms in level zero appear uniform, and share superficial features such as yellowed wallpaper, damp carpeting, electrical outlets, and inconsistently placed fluorescent lighting that flickers randomly and hums at a constant frequency. There is so much more to talk about this level, which I will definitely be doing in my next video, so stay tuned. Another interesting level would be level one, also known as the habitable zone. It is a massive warehouse possessing a consistent supply of water and electricity thus allowing indefinite habitation by wanderers, provided that appropriate precautions are taken. Crates of supplies appear and disappear randomly within the level, often containing a mixture of vital items such as food, almond water, weaponry, and some other nonsensical objects like assorted car parts, boxes of crayons, or even bundles of human hair. Apart from the main nine, sub-levels, enigmatic levels, and even negative levels have been observed. While these levels may be unconfirmed, their existence is not explicitly denied. Next is the entities. If levels are the locations, then entities are the creatures native to them. Some are out for blood, others are out for cuddles, while some are more human than we could ever hope to be. Entities are generally classified according to four categories, number, name, hazard class, and known habitat. Number refers to the numerical notation of an entity. Name is, well, the name given to an entity. Hazard class refers to the implicit danger level of an entity, ranked from a scale of 0 to 7. To illustrate, class 0 poses no threat whatsoever. Class 2 can and will injure wanderers, sometimes even killing them when provoked. Class 4 is aggressive and hostile. Most entities in the back rooms fall under this category. Class 5 and class 6 range from dangerous to extremely dangerous. Class 7 otherwise known as the mythological class, is a classification given to the unknown and anomalous enigmatic entities typically possessing godlike powers and abilities, or are capable of achieving impossible feats. Lastly, habitat refers to the location where an entity typically resides. Some of the classifications include rare, appearing in less than five levels, common, seen on more than 20 levels, majority, residing in over 50% of levels, and the back rooms, found in all levels. An example of a typical entry of an entity is as follows. Entity number three, Smilers, class four, majority. Smilers are hostile entities, identified by their signature reflective white glowing eyes and long smile with sharp teeth gleaming in the dark. These entities only appear in dark corners or doorways, where their true form is hidden from view. Unconfirmed sources reported that they possess alien-like bodies, with arms and legs bending in unnatural ways. Smilers are obsessively attracted to light, and will chase after anything remotely bright. The entity will only attack if one panics or makes a loud noise. 
Otherwise, maintaining eye contact while slowly retreating or throwing a light source to distract it are great means of escape. Then we have groups. Surviving in the back rooms is not an unachievable task. Throughout the known history of the back rooms, wanderers and even entities have been reported to come together, forming groups or factions in pursuit of some goal, be it survival or something else entirely. The MEG, also known as the Major Explorer Group, is currently the largest faction in the back rooms. Their sole purpose is to locate the exit. The group operates in small teams, each conducting various tasks such as exploring, mapping out areas, lending a helping hand to lost wanderers, and terminating hostile entities. So how did it all begin? While the origin of the back rooms vary, it is commonly believed that the dimension was discovered during an experiment conducted in 1987, codenamed Project Gaia. When the government of the United States caught wind of the experiment, they were keen on funding the research. They believed that the back rooms was the light to the future, being the solution to future storage and shelter problems stemming from overpopulation. However, one day, they discovered a man who claimed to have fallen through the ground while jogging and ended up in the back rooms. The man suffered from inexplicable amnesia and injuries consistent with claw marks. The project was then promptly put on hold. If everything I've said until now unsettles you, then I'm afraid this is only the beginning. You'll experience terror and insanity like never before during your journey in the back rooms. You'll have close calls with death, but even death may not be the end of your travels. Vigilance and preparation is key, even when traversing safe zones. So before you move on, know that there is no confirmed exit to this place. No wanderer has ever been confirmed to have re-entered back to reality. This place is your new home. Good luck, wanderer. You'll need it. Because one thing's for sure, once you've entered the back rooms, you're never getting out.